Well, can I go to Bryce Harper? Absolutely. I think, I think you do have the player. Absolutely. <laughs> for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Uh, Tommy John surgery. Give me an idea. And I know you have to wait to see how it progresses, but when can he potentially play the outfield and even before that be a DH in your lineup? What's the best case scenario? Yeah, I think we're looking really at the um, about the all-star break where he can start DHing and and, uh, and probably it's going to be months, six weeks after that to build, build his arm up and then finally play in the outfield. So we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, we really think he's going to be in the outfield at some point next year. So what does that mean in the meantime? How do you begin to budget personnel? And I mean, obviously a huge bat that you would not have for a first half of a season. Yeah, so, you know, we got, we can mix that DH spot up amongst Schwarber and Castellanos and, and Alec Bohm and Reese Hoskins. And, and we've got, you know, those Schwarber and Castellanos on the corner. We've got Matt Veerling and, and Brandon Marsh in center field. We just picked up Jake Cave uh, on a, uh, off waivers. So. I think we, we've got it covered for the time being. Obviously, we want we want Bryce back and, and in the lineup every day. But, um, you know, we did really well last year. A bunch of guys stepped up. Derek Hall and Nick Maton and, and all those other guys, they stepped up and, and, and covered their, their tracks until Harp got back. And we're looking to do the same thing. Is there something that you could describe when you took over as manager that was it magical was it just by accident i don't know how much you could actually share or want to share but the team responded to you to say the least yeah and i and i tell the same story over and over in that we we when we signed schwarber and, and castellanos in spring training we knew that we had a good rotation good bullpen we knew that we were going to score runs we really thought good about our club coming out of spring and we got off to a little bit of a bad start and and you know we had high expectations and, and we lost a little confidence and then we hit may and it was like the toughest part of our schedule we had the die we had all the west coast teams the mets atlanta i mean all these teams and and uh, we didn't have a very good month and then june hit we make the move uh, i come in at the perfect time we go through the easiest part of our schedule and, and we start winning ball games we start playing the way we thought we were going to play coming out of spring training and guys start getting confidence and just kind of snowballed from there. How much of your experience as a major league coach never have managed in the big leagues of all of the managers that you've had before that you worked under uh, to come in? Everybody talks about how quick and things speed up. You've been a bench coach. You've sat in major league dugouts for a long time. Was it is it really different? Was it was there much of an adjustment as a result of now sitting in that seat as opposed to the guy that you sat next to. Yeah, I think I, I'm a pretty good observer. So I've been observing these managers, Joe Torrey, Joe Girardi, Gabe Kapler for all these years. And at the same time, managing the game in my mind, every single game, every single pitch. So there was an adjustment. I, I don't think really to tell you the truth, it was as big as I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, the other part of it is that I really leaned on the coaching staff. We have a great coaching okay. staff. and. I mean, there was really no decision that was made that wasn't made by the entire group of people or, or a small group of people on that bench. So mm -hmm. uh, they helped me quite a bit. Rob, I, I want to ask this one thing to observe a long time and have a lot of mental reps. It's another to actually be in those postseason fires. Was there anything that you picked up managing in those high leverage situations mm -hmm. in October and on a World Series stage? Yeah, I think anything we do in life you're not really sure if you're going to be able to do it until you actually do it yeah, yeah. and experience it. And so going through that experience, I feel like uh, not that I've got it all figured out. That's one thing that we need to stay away from. <laughs> but I feel a little more confident being having gone through that those all those situations and having to make all the, the decisions um, right or wrong and then being able to be accountable for those decisions, too. I want to ask you about your young pitching because Maybe you have to go back to Aaron Nola. Last time the Phillies could start really talking about impact homegrown pitchers mm -hmm. on the cusp of making this roster and making contributions. So tell me about the group you have, especially Painter, and how you feel about these guys and how quickly you can have them on your major league roster. Yeah, so we've got the, the big three real air, Painter, um, Abel, and, and, and McGarry. Um, and all big arms, but Painter's really the most polished guy, and he's actually the youngest guy. 
big, strong, physical, uh, really good athlete, does the little things, holds runners, fields his position, big arm, good stuff, command. Uh, he's got a lot of really good things going for him. And we think that th there might be a chance that he breaks camp with us wow. next year. And if not, then then at some point during the season. So Abel and, 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 and Griff are a little bit further behind, but uh, you know, Painter's right on the cusp. Don't you love to hear that these yeah. days? Yeah. Yeah. A young pitcher actually has a shot of breaking with the big yes. league team yes. rather than putting all these governors on them. Yeah. Kind of let him dictate whether you want to carry him or not, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and it depends on how he performs in spring training and, and you know, what he looks like on the mound. we got to get an eye test, you know. Is, is he but he's moved quickly too, right? He's moved quickly yeah. and, and he's handled every yeah, level he that great. he's been at. Yeah. How about Ranger Suarez? I, I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't bear down on Ranger Suarez uh, you know, through the summer, you had a lot of confidence in him. Yeah. In how you used him. Yeah. What makes him special? Um, he was good. Just, he's so calm. He's so poised on the mound. Nothing, there's no situation that's too big for him. Obviously, has good stuff. He can command the baseball. Uh, he does a lot of, he really fields his position. He's, he's one of the best fielding pitchers in all of baseball. He does a lot of good things. All right. I, so, it's fun to, you know, look after a game. I don't know how much you did this year, but in particular, maybe the World Series. Like, how much, if any, did you look back at a game, either go over it again, uh, decision making, or actually what transpired? And for me, watching, obviously, we watched closely. Did Maldonado reach in there and put his elbow in front and well, get hit on I thought, purpose? I thought. I no, thought just it like, we're just, yeah. it's just us here. <laughs> Of course he did. Nobody's watching. He was on Nobody's the plate. Watching. He was right on the plate. <laughs> Wheeler's throwing those two seamers in. I was waiting for, for your, go ahead your Billy me. Martin moment to come out and go crazy. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Robbie, he keeps it. Look at I mean, was that part? I mean, because we know how the, the inning played out. And yeah. I'm not trying to get you upset here, but. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing up old stuff. No, now. but I just, uh, <laughs> that bothered me. Like, what a, no? Yeah, What no. did you see from the well, dugout? Well, to tell you the truth, I was talking to Caleb at the time when he got hit. And. And everything was exploding, and I said, "What? What happening?" Oh. So you got hit. I said, "We'll we'll check it on the." And then once I saw it on the on the TV and how he leaned in, but you know it is what it is, and you can't replay that. That's the so, thing. That's, you know, yeah, that's a bummer. What do yeah. you think? I, you know, I, I thought it was <laughs> a great baseball play. Maldonado told me he wasn't swinging the bat unless he had two strikes. Yeah, you got to make an effort he to get out of the way. Up. No, you don't. Not if the ball's right on you like that. It wasn't over the strike you've zone. Read well, the, you've read the rule book how many times? Don't you have to make an effort to get out of the way? Who was it uh, earlier in the series? Somebody leaned in and got hit, and they. I like Miss Diaz. Yeah, yeah. Look at you. Yeah. That was game one, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah that's right. And they, and no hesitation on the ball. Him, get back. They, yep. they right. called it a ball. Well, he did go but, chicken yeah. wing. But yeah. they they kept him in the batter's box. Yeah. So. Something we can, Al is, we, I mean, we can spend the next three tell. hours just talking about the one play. One thing that we can replay and rehash with some more smiles is this photo from the Wayback Machine, Rob. Oh. Yeah. So we've gotten to know uh, the Kansas Jayhawks Sports <laughs> Information Department and the baseball program over this year. We, we were with Skip Price before he retired in, in Austin doing a show. And so Brandon and the people, they hooked us up with these old photos. You're good. Yeah, that's old. No, not that old. Not that that's old. old. <laughs> what, I would have been, what memory I would have comes been back 18 years Jayhawks. old. I, you know, just my time there. I, I just love the school. Um, not that I was good at school, but I love the school. <laughs> I, I love the atmosphere. Yeah, and and all the all the great people that I met there and that I'm still really close friends with. Yeah. And, and we get together. I, this is the weekend that we usually go to to uh, Fort Myers and play golf. And uh, I had to miss it. So oh. that's the first time I've missed it. Well, you can sync up with Dan Fitzgerald, new head coach there in Kansas. But uh, Rob Thompson, always a pleasure to visit with you and your journey from Ontario to Lawrence, Kansas, to now National League yeah, Pennant sure, there man. in Philadelphia. Yeah. We'll talk to you in Clearwater when you know when things are a little bit more solidified to talk about I superstar shortstops. That's that great. sound good? Okay. Yes. <laughs> there he goes, Rob Thompson <laughs> of the Phillies.